is League of Legends a game about destroying your enemies on the fields of justice, teaching us to be good citizens? Actually, yeah. Do you play League of Legends? No? Are you sure? Well, you're looking like the minority more and more each day. Basically a cross between Capture the Flag and the battle sequence from Braveheart. League of Legends is one of the biggest games on the planet, with more than 70 million registered users and 32 million playing on a monthly basis. But what comes after you develop the 19th most populous country in the world? Trolls? Trolls and more trolls. Trolls, or griefers as they're known, thrive on disrupting other people's good times. <gasps> no, okay. Oh, I sneezed. So in basketball, if a cheater is someone who goaltends or throws elbows, a troll is someone who just walks away with the ball. In fact, they're just waiting for me to finish to say something really awful. Oh my god, you f***ing loser. I know you hack. I'm gonna tell the admin on you. In League of Legends, trolling could be anything from using crude and abusive language, abandoning your teammates mid-match, or intentionally feeding, also known as dying on purpose. Which is just... ugh. And although it may seem like a minor annoyance, trolls can have a serious effect on our lives online. I can't! I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna f***ing lose it! A study in the Journal of Computer Mediated Communication found that uncivil comments not only polarized readers, but actually changed a reader's interpretation of the news story itself. That's right, the bad behavior was so nasty that it actually altered people's perception of reality. Different online communities have tried different things to make sense of bad behavior. 4chan just ignores everything except child pornography, Xbox Live just bans people, and Reddit has moderators. But League of Legends has done something unique. And weirdly, it seems to be working. So what's the story? Well, for starters, League of Legends has posted a code of conduct. So what? Lots of places have codes of conduct and people ignore them. But in May 2011, League of Legends introduced something new, the tribunal. Here's how it works. You just finished a match and you got smoked. It's frustrating, of course. And you've been berating your teammates over the last hour over chat with things like, just f***ing kill yourself, you f***ing 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 King noob. No big deal, right? It's just words. And maybe you'll get away with it one time, but be toxic enough on a consistent basis and you'll get flagged. Then the tribunal automatically builds a case of your misdeeds and you're voluntarily judged by a jury of higher level players. Finally, your punishment is meted out anonymously. Think Judge Dredd. So, does it work? Well, in the tribunal's first year, 47 million votes were handed out, and 75% of the people who were judged never had to be disciplined again. The most important thing is that discipline is a collective responsibility, available to all who choose to participate. Offenders even get a tribunal reform card that shows exactly why they were reported, and a chat log explaining their offenses. They can be quite damning, but they force you to confront your bad behavior and understand how your nastiness affects other people. But there's a big reason why the tribunal works at all. The impulse to punish bad behavior triggers something deep inside of us. A group of Swiss researchers using brain scans during a set of games found that the decision to punish cheaters stimulated the dorsal striatum, a brain region associated with processing rewards. It's called altruistic punishment, and it means that some people enjoy keeping the peace even if there's no other reward. Now I know what you're gonna say in the comments, so slow down. You're going to very politely write, Dear Jamin, lots of communities suffer from trolls, and they do exactly the same things, and none of it seems to work. You Noob. And you are correct, because it's something much deeper than just discipline. League of Legends doesn't just punish those who do bad, it actually encourages and trains them to become better online citizens. As psychologist B.F. Skinner has noted, there are two ways to motivate people. You can punish them, or you can reward them. Most communities only focus on the negative. Warnings, bans, things like that. But League of Legends has decided to focus on the positive as well. So, how do you incentivize people to play nicely? Well, there's the Honor Initiative, a point system instituted last October. If you earn enough honor from positive play, you get a fancy crest to show people you're an honorable chap. I said good day, sir! I spoke to Daniel Molden, an associate professor of social psychology at Northwestern, and he told me that the Honor Initiative does something very powerful. Although there are no in-game benefits, Honor establishes your reputation. This may not seem like much, but in well-functioning communities, reputation is the basis of trust. I just got a ribbon. In real life, there are lots of social systems, like gossip, that let you quickly gauge someone's reputation. But when you're dealing with millions of anonymous online players, you have to create a system that lets you quickly know what someone's rep is. And that's what Riot's doing with the honor system. But they went even further than that. In League of Legends, good behavior, or at least cooperative behavior, gives you the best chance at the most important thing, 
Winning. Winning. Think about the structure of League of Legends. It's not a superstar driven game. The team that's working together the best is normally the team that wins. There are more than 110 different champions, and they all do different things. You could be a tank like Rammus and take a lot of damage, or a support player like Janna. Everyone has a job to do, and a lane to attack or defend. League of Legends players even have a term for it, playing the meta. It's just shorthand for having a balanced team. This doesn't mean, of course, that everyone you meet in League of Legends is going to be a good sport, nor did Riot invent the MOBA genre, but they are working both sides of Skinner's equation. That's what's so fascinating. The game treats punishment as a collective effort. It rewards players with a good reputation, and most importantly, teamwork increases your chances of winning. winning. And it looks like Riot's method is popping up elsewhere in games. Even Call of Duty, the ultimate selfish army of one game, is making some changes. Last year, Treyarch published a list of bannable offenses in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. <laughs> I made her kill herself. <laughs> but they also tweak the multiplayer to reward certain types of team behaviors, not just headshots. And perhaps League of Legends approach should make its way outside the world of games. In the real world, we see a lot of stick, but not a lot of carrot. In school, if we're bad, we get sent to detention. But if we're good, our reward is not getting sent to detention? In fact, there's a great example of what a League of Legends style system would look like in the real world from Richmond, British Columbia. In 2002, the city decided that it would give out positive tickets for good behavior. This led to a 50% drop in calls to the police. Next stop, replacing The Hague with the tribunal. So what do you think? Has League of Legends figured out a way to inspire good citizenship? Or are we always destined to suffer the trolls? Let us know in the comments. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week. Last week, we talked about violence in video games. Let's check the comments and see what you had to say. Captain Starcrunch1 wonders if we'd still be in the violence if it was as realistic as it is in real life. That's an excellent point. Graphical violence, I think, is a relative thing. I mean, people really freaked out over Death Race, and it's not really that realistic. And I know when I was a kid, Mortal Kombat seemed really disgusting, but not so disgusting now. So I think it'll always be kind of a shifting scale. Uh, regardless, games have a long way to go compared to film. I mean, there's some really, really bloody films out there. Super Samurai 9000 thinks that violence is common context specific that depends on who's playing. That's an excellent, excellent point. And it really depends on what mindset you're in. Some people sit down, they play Call of Duty, they just want to blow off steam. Some people sit down and play Call of Duty and they really want to think about what's happening or about the interactions between the players. So yeah, it's really context specific. Totally right. The Joe KG points out that violent video games have helped with collaboration skills. That's awesome. Great to hear. Chris Burnham points out that violence is a staple in other mediums, including storytelling like literature. Excellent, excellent point. I'd like to think that games are a part of that larger community. So yeah, sweet. Cool, man. So a bunch of you have pointed out that my glasses don't have lenses in them. You're right. Look, these are the ones I wear on camera. These are the ones that I wear at home. See all the glare? That's why I wear lensless glasses. Tiago Junges points out that I look like Moss from the IT crowd, AKA Richard Ayoade. All right, so I wasn't in total agreement about the Tori Moi one, but I'll give you that one.